I am here at Ricarte Precision today. We're talking 1986 foundation, 14,000 square feet, and over two million dollars over the last couple of years in the investment of automation, making sure that they are a leader in the industry. But what I've realized as I've gone to shops around the country and around the world is even if we invest in the technology of the machining, we invest in the people, which are so very important, much like Randall, who I got here right now, the backbone of the company are people. We do need to invest in technology that allows us to truly and honestly know what's going on inside the machine. Not just tribal knowledge, not just me trying to get a raise of technology telling you how good I'm doing, but the truth. And not from, you know, someone looking down on us, but in a fun, competitive way that we constantly want to do better. And that's what this is about. So we're going to talk datanomics today. We're going to talk Pro Shop ERP as well. And I got Randall because I can talk from a bird's eye view, but this guy on the floor is the man when it comes to truly understanding where those successes are. So Randall, thank you for being here. Let's talk a little bit about datanomics. I know we have some tabs here, but to introduce to the audience, you got into machine monitoring because you jumped into automation and needed to know what's going on. Am I right? You're correct, sir. So we brought in Datanomics because we truly wanted to understand with the automation what's happening on the machines. So this way we were able to go back and validate what, what's actually happening on that machine. So, so important, isn't it? It, it? Incredible. Back to your comment about competitiveness, this actually drives our guys to see when they're down. They, they know, they don't want me coming around the corner and saying, why is this all red? So they help, it helps them keep the machine running as well. I even heard a rumor that if they're taking their break, but they've set up the machine to run through that break, they're getting extra pats on the back, extra coot. I mean, that's you profitability for you guys as well as a company leadership. And better for them because then they feel better about their job. They're excited to come in and, you know, we all make more money. I like that. So yes, what sir. kind of tabs we have pulled up here? Because I know we're going to dive a little deeper into the technology. Yeah. So first tab I have pulled up is this is a history of what we ran on our automated machines last week. So we can see what our capacity utilization was, the availability, and then it gets a bit more granular. But to, to highlight what we're looking at is, so this was last week's run. You know, we're coming in from the weekend. Nothing was running here. But we've got our first shift and second shifts, and we see once we started how long it took to get going, and then what these little breaks in the run process are. And our, our operators, this was waiting for an operator. Maybe it was a tool break, whatever it was, but it highlights how much downtime we had versus uptime. So we can see how successful we were at running our utilization all the way through the unscheduled shifts and the scheduled shifts and breaks to your point earlier. Randall, I'm not a professional. However, that's a whole lot of green. It is a whole that lot of green. It looks like you are dominating manufacturing <laughs> at the moment. Is that also, am I reading that correctly? You're reading it correctly. So yeah, all this green means uptime. And then we see here, we've got you know our 90%, 97%, 97%, 99%, 98%, 100% 100 on a Saturday. So that's all bonus time for us too. So is this live action in the moment, but also researchable to go back to and see where developments can be made? Exactly. So with, with the ability to go back and see what happened for us with automated tool machines, we've got multiple pallets, multiple tool stations, 90 here, 320 tool stations here. We can build in tool redundancy to eliminate the downtime. So they also have sensors. So if tool breaks, we want to keep this thing running. It calls up the next tool puts it back in and we're off to the races all over again. That is clever, Randall. Now I've heard conversations before and I'm just gonna make up some numbers, but I think they'll, you'll find them relevant with what you're doing where, let's say we have a 12 hour program, right? And we know we have a 12 hour program, but we're trying to create more efficiency from that program. So we go into a deep dive and go, okay, well I have 30 tools being used. Obviously I'm making up numbers of course, but 30 tools being used, but two of those are 90% of my overall manufacturing process. You can go in and look at per tool, per product, per whatever's being machined and really truly understand where I should make my invested time because why would I really worry about the other 28 tools in the process if there's only a couple of minutes if the domination of my overall cycle time is two or three tools, right? Exactly, exactly. So the next step I have up for that exactly is this is this machine's currently in setup, but we're still tracking as we do our setup piece, our test piece, what tools are running to your point. So we can optimize and say, okay, light tool usage here, heavy tool usage here. Let's make sure we have three of those preloaded and we can get the performance. The other aspect of it that we like is if we start seeing tool wear 
through three, four, five parts, whatever it is, and yeah. we have the pallets preloaded, uh, we're starting to see degradation of the tool and our tolerance of that feature is opening up, pull in a brand new tool every fifth part. It's really, really helpful. I mean, I talk a little bit about my machinist career that I had and because I was a few, a decade, over a decade ago now, there's so much that I learned from people like you, Randall, where I walk into a shop and see the success that you're creating and going, gosh, I wish I knew that information. I wish I knew when my tool was starting to get older. I wish I knew without truly investing my own personal time when I need to get parts out the door <laughs> to allow somebody else to do that. Exactly. Do you see these benefits as well? Uh, it's huge and it was so quickly apparent to us because it, it, the data is just sitting there waiting to be collected. Now it's grouped up, we come and review it real time or historically and say, okay, what is this? It also gives our guys, hey, you know what? We hated this tool. We love this tool because it works so well in this product. Okay, now we can Let's group those together, get cost savings there on our tooling. So it just, it really helps close the loop on that whole ecosystem, as well as, you know, with ProShop, you're, you're coming in and seeing, okay, this is my scheduled time that I have for this, or my predicted time based off the quote. Right. This helps to find what did we actually do? And they all talk to each other, and it's just a completely invaluable source of information that is mined for you. You just have to learn how to read it. And it's so basic deep dive into everything we think we know, but it becomes exactly. the real truth. So you first started this at Ricarte Precision knowing that the investment in automation, that's how we started this conversation. Exactly. But something happened over the first three months, six months, where you realized this could be utilized for more than just what we're looking at here with these Matt Sura machines, Exactly, right? exactly. This was, again, an invaluable, we've used that word a little bit too, but it, it, it's, it's the truth. These two is just tracking for the automation purposes of we want to know when this machine is running. And that was the main goal. So it was just spindle touch time. And then we started looking at all the valuable data within this and we're like, Whoa, wait a second. We can validate unautomated machines and automate the process of the validation cycle. Randall, you, my friend, are so well-spoken. Do you think it would be possible that we can shoot over to the other area, make another video on that topic for everyone who's learning? It sounds like that video is coming up next. I think it is. <laughs> Let's head on over there. All right. <laughs>